the state of a transaction states of a transaction as transaction can be in a various state. Now, what do I mean by state is that the status of the transaction. So, whether it has completed, whether it has started, etcetera, this is called the states of a transaction and the state of a transaction can be essentially explained using this diagram. So, a transaction can be active that means, the transaction is running, it is executing somehow. So, this can be an active state fine. Then there is something called a partially committed, partially committed state. So, what is a partially committed state? So, the partially committed state a transaction is said to be in a partially committed state if the last statement of the transaction has been executed successfully, but the transaction has not itself declared to be completing successfully. So, the last statement has been done, but it is still not declared to be correct that is a partially committed. Then of course, there is a committed which means after the partially committed thing the transaction essentially completes everything that needs to be done and then declares itself to be successfully completed. So, committed essentially means successfully completed that is a committed state. Then of course, there is a failed state, a transaction has failed because of different reasons power system crash etcetera whatever all those uh, things and the system errors etcetera that is a failed state. And then after the transaction fails it has no other way than to abort. So, abort meaning a transaction must undo all the things that it has done and should roll back to the state before it started. So, if a transaction that uh, transfer of money aborts, what will happen is that the transaction should roll back to the original amounts that A and B had. So, that is a abort. Now, of course, we can draw this state diagram is that a transaction starts from active and it can go to partially committed state fine or it can go to failed. From a partially committed state, the transaction can go to the committed state, but unfortunately, it can also go to the failed state. So, after the last statement has of the transaction is successfully done, there may be still some failures, and we will see why these failures can happen. So, these are logs need to be written, etc. Some more operation needs to be done by the database, and during any of those operations, it may fail. And of course, from the failed state, there is no other way than to abort. So, now you see essentially once the transaction starts from active, it ends up in either a committed or aborted state, there is no other way. So, that is thing. So, either a transaction commits which means it has completed everything successfully or it aborts that means it has failed somewhere and it must roll back to the database state where before it started. So, that is the thing about states of a transaction. So, the next we will go over this um, certain schemes of these transactions and how to manage transactions etcetera, etcetera. The first one is called a shadow database scheme. So, shadow database ok. Let us explain the term what, what is it. So, essentially these are all form part of recovery management. So, why do a transaction needs to recover? So, when a transaction aborts it needs to recover which means uh, it needs to ensure that the database recovers to the original state. So, if A's money has been debited without crediting B and then the transaction fails, then A's money must be credited back the same amount, etcetera. So, recovery is the one that is ensures that atomicity is maintained. It also ensures that durability has maintained. So, recovery has some more role. So, if the transaction said it has been committed, then the durability essentially says that well, even if for some reason the B's account has not been reflected with the correct thing, the recovery system will ensure that B will have the actual the B's account will reflect the correct balance if necessary by running the transaction again, but making sure of course, that A's money is not debited twice, but we will discover uh, we will we will uh, 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 discuss all those things later, but that is essentially the point of recovery management is these two things. So, the shadow database scheme is a recovery management scheme. So, recovery management this is called a recovery management system and the shadow database scheme is one of them. And what does the shadow database scheme does is that it enforces atomicity by maintaining a shadow copy of the database. Now, what is a shadow copy? As we said earlier, there is a mirror or shadow copy which is essentially an entire replica of the database and before any transaction starts. So, this is the idea. So, this is a database. So, this is the database 
Now, this is a shadow copy is being made, this is a shadow copy. So, this means that the entire database it is an exact replica of this thing. And now, a transaction is run on this database, this is a transaction is being run. Now, if some problem happens during the transaction, then what happens is that, so now there are two cases, if, if it is successful, if everything is successful, then essentially the shadow copy is being updated with the new thing. If on the other hand, it fails, so let me use a different color for this, if on the other hand, it fails, then this database is essentially removed and the shadow copy is com now taken as the correct database because this is where the transaction started. So, the transaction meaning what the operations are being done on the database. So, there are two ways either it succeeds or it fails. If it succeeds that means the new database the current database that it is working upon is the correct copy. So, the shadow copy is updated. If it fails on the other hand then it means that the shadow copy on which it was started is the correct copy. So, then the shadow copy is copied to the actual database. So, this is the shadow database scheme. Now, as you can see this is highly inefficient. Why is this highly inefficient? because you are copying the entire database every time a transaction starts. Essentially, it is not being done, there are some database pointers, etcetera, but it is, you can see that this is very, very inefficient, this can be extremely inefficient. And the other important, more important problem is that when there are concurrent transactions happening, so when there are more than one transactions happening, it really cannot efficiently handle those uh, more than one transactions uh, in a concurrent manner. So, that is the problem with shadow database scheme for the recovery management. So, the Important thing that the recovery management then uh, uses is something called the log. This is LOG log. Log is sometimes also called this is log or sometimes also called a journal by a database. So, this essentially keeps track of every operation that is done by a tr transaction. So, every transaction operation, every operation in a transaction is recorded here. Every transaction operation is recorded in the log. So, this is like saying whenever you do anything you maintain a copy of that or you, uh, you write it down in the log. So, if you say that okay, transaction 1 reads A. So, that is being written in the log the transaction 1 has read A. Then transaction 1 writes B. So, that is also being maintained in the log etcetera. So, the log if one reads the log then the one kind of the entire understanding of which transaction operated on which data item and in which order very importantly. So, that is the purpose of the log. So, log very important is that log is maintained on the disk. So, that means log essentially what is the idea is that log is a log is persists. So, the log uh, can be read again and again as many times as it is because it persists ok. That is one thing. And then log uh, is uh, periodically backed up to archival storage. So, that it is really really persists and you can go back to any log uh, any any position in the log uh, if it wants. So, that is because of this persistent issue it is being written on the disk ok. Now, for a particular transaction T suppose there is a transaction T the couple of things are maintained in the log. The first operation I mean it maintains is that it says start. So, start is the operation and which transaction started. So, it said start T. So, that is maintained. So, this is one kind of operation that is maintained. Then what it is maintained is that this is a write operation for the transaction T for the named item x and the old value is this and the new value is this. So, this is also maintained in the log. Now, you see how detailed this is. So, it essentially says that transaction T has written the value on x and it has replaced the old value with the new. Then it also says read so, transaction T has read the value of x and the value that it has read is this value. So, it has read essentially the when the transaction T read x the value was val ok. Then of course, there are this commit T and abort T. So, these are the five operations that the transaction writes on the log ok. So, these are the five operations that the transaction writes on the logs and how do we recover using logs? So, the recovery using logs is done in the following manner. So, now we will try to uh, build a recovery system using logs, recovery using this logs that we just described ok. So, the first thing is that there are two important operations. The first operation is called undo. What is undo? Essentially, suppose A has been A's uh, account has been created uh, debited. So, how does one undo? 
essentially the log will say that A was read, this was the value that was read, then transaction uh, T wrote A and this was the old value, this was the new value etcetera. So, if these all those things are maintained in the log, then to undo the log can be traversed in a reverse manner in chronological order that means, this was the latest in time point and this was earlier in time point, it can be done, in, it can be read in a reverse manner and each of these can be undone. So, the old value may be written back etcetera etcetera that is the way of doing the undo. And then there is another operation which is called redo which is essentially just the mirror if of that. So, the transaction was supposed to do something, but it could not and for durability etcetera it and to make sure that these values are there. So, it is read in the correct order the forward order this is called the backward order this is the forward order and then those things are uh, set to the new values. So, once more. So, in the undo the log is read in a backward order and the right values are going to their old ones and in the redo it is read in the forward order and the new writes are updated to the new value. So, this is essentially how the logs are used to recover from a problem in the transaction and then a transaction is set to reach its commit point. Now, this is not commit, this is the commit point. So, the definition of a commit point is essentially when all the transactions, all the operations have been done correctly and they have been recorded in the log. So, the both the things must happen. So, all the transactions, all the operations in the transaction have been executed successfully plus all of them have been recorded in the log. So, if the recording in the log is not taken place, then it does not say to reach the commit point. The transaction does not reach the commit point unless all of those are recorded in the log. So, now, beyond this commit point, so once the transaction reaches a commit point and after that it is said to be committed. That means, once this is written on the log and everything has been done successfully, then the transaction is said to be committed. That means, the transaction now cannot say that okay, I will undo etcetera. It has to only redo and make sure that the effects of the transaction are permanent in the database. So, that is the commit point and then once that is done, the commit T entry is made in the log. So, this is the commit uh, t and if there is on the other hand if there is an abort t then that means the undo operations have to be done and that is uh, easier to understand. So, if uh, 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 way once once a transaction reaches the commit point the logs etcetera must be written on the disk. The logs must be persisted in the disk the all the transactions that are done must also be persistent on the disk. Now, here is a point is that how does transactions happen. So, the or the database uh, commits this uh, transaction is that it brings the necessary data item from the disk to the main memory and changes the value in the main memory right because that is the only way it can do. So, when it says to reach the commit point it has to be made sure that all of these writes which are supposed to take place on the disk has taken place on the disk. So, if necessary there is a disk flush operation that means all the things that are in the disk buffer etcetera is actually gone to the disk. So, the actually the disk contains the new copy that is called a force writing. So, if necessary to reach the commit point everything that is changed on the main memory must be force written on the disk. So, this is to make sure that the disk contains the correct versions no matter what is there. So, this ensures that the redo operations can be done successfully. So, this is a point of recovery of transactions. Now, there is another thing which is called the concurrency issue of transactions. Concurrency essentially means that more than one transactions are being executed in the database and they may be accessing the same data item. Otherwise, there is no problem and anyway why does concurrency useful is that they of course, increase the time to read. So, this is much more efficient etcetera and uh, they are the, so the, it increases the utilization of the processor and the disk and CPU and all those things and the average response time, the average completion time for transactions is reduced. So, that is the thing, but there may be problems in the sense that one is trying to read a data item while the other transaction is trying to write. So, the concurrency control schemes, so this is called the concurrency just like we had recovery systems, uh, this is a concurrency control schemes must ensure the correctness of this. The correctness meaning if one is trying to read a value that it should read concurrency control schemes ensure that it reads the correct value. So, this is called a concurrency control scheme. So, the important operation of this is the correctness it must ensure the correctness of the two transactions that is the important thing. And to do that we define this uh, notion of serializability. Serializability is a formal way of 
studying whether concurrent transactions are correct or not. So, serializability is the actual uh, formal way of doing this. So, that ends the introduction of transactions and what transactions are and a little bit of logs etcetera. Next we will go over the recovery management systems in much more detail.